All right, welcome to another Easy Mesh tutorial. I'm Yago Crescendo, and I'm going to show you how to make this pennant. Uh, the reason why I'm making this pennant is a buddy of mine would like me to make this pennant for him and someone else, and I figured I'd make a video out of it. So here it is. Here's the pennant, and we're going to go ahead and make that out of mesh for Second Life. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up Google SketchUp. Um, so I'll just go down to SketchUp, and I prefer to use an uh, older version of SketchUp that I've had for a while. Um, it's obviously your choice which one this, uh, this should work with any SketchUp version. Um, note that in my previous videos uh, SketchUp was free and it is no longer free. It, uh, you have to buy it or have an older version or get an older version for it to be free. So anyways, um, first thing I'm going to do is what I always do is I uh, get this work plane tool. I click the center point and go along one axis. The red axis is the one I prefer. Then I right click and I usually set these, but I'm not going to set them this time because I don't need to. I'm just going to use the default grid size. So I'm using my middle mouse wheel to cam around. Uh, by clicking my middle mouse wheel, I could pan left and right and up and down, and by scrolling in and out, it will pull the camera in and out. So first I'm going to draw a square by selecting the rectangle tool and going all the way across this grid. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to import that image that I just showed you um, right here. And I'm just going to stretch this across my um, my uh, work plane and uh, square that I drew. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to outline this. Um, to do that, I am going to uh, first I'm going to get this uh, blue dots out of here because I have this selected. I'm going to hit the arrow tool and just click anywhere so you can see this a little better. Uh, now I'll use the arc tool and I'm just going to start tracing around this. I'm going to start right here I believe and um, start by making a small arc um, like this. It's really hard to make very intricate arcs, like really small ones, so you got to really kind of cam in to do that. And that's why you see my mouse bouncing around, or uh, my cam bouncing around a lot, is because I'm getting, I'm kind of pulling out to see where my arc is and then going back in to make the next one. So I'm going, after I make one arc, then I go to that the end of that arc and um, I start to draw my next uh, piece of the arc. The reason why I'm go not going all the way across is you'll see that it's not going to make the right shape. It's important this blue line you see here um, basically is saying that it's it's going to be a smooth transition from one arc to the other. And I'll give you an example. If I were to um, say I was going to make this arc piece to about here and I decided I wanted it up here, you'll notice you have sort of a, uh, a pit right here where it kind of divots. If you pan back, you'll see that sort of a pit. So um, you can always hit Control Z um, to uh, go back one. Um, so now I'm going to get my arch tool and I'm just going to uh, make the proper curve, the one that I, I was intending to make, um, to about here. And you, when you make an arc, um, it's important to know there's three clicks involved. There's the first click, and then the second click is um, where you're going to go to. Now, you don't see me make this third click because it's already preset that I'm going to make it in an arc, but the third click is how much arch you want. So you could really drag this as much as you want. But I'm going to drag it until I get that blue line. See? Now click again. So that's the three clicks. Now if you um, have this arc already kind of uh, here, like you'll see that it already has the blue line select selected, and you like that angle, you could just go ahead and double click, and it'll make that arc for you. So uh, that's that's why it's been I you haven't seen the third click is because um, I was satisfied with the arch the way it is. Um, so here we go. We are pretty much to the edge here, and you'll see there's kind of a straight line going down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this pencil tool and I'm going to go ahead and make that line. So I go from the bottom of this one. And I'm just going to go to right about here. Now things don't have to be exactly perfect, you know, you, 
they don't have to look exactly like if you wanted to change this up a little bit you can you know you're you're trying to make something creative here you're, you're not so much trying to um <laughs> not so much trying to uh copy what someone else has done so much as you're trying to you know make an original piece of art and i know the things that i've done in the past were pretty much original but this is something that one of my friends really wants so I'm going to go ahead and make this for him and uh, show you guys um, the method that someone would use to make something like this. Um, and this is, this is just one way to do it. And I know that I'm talking more than I'm explaining, but really there's not a lot of explaining here. I'm just going around this whole thing with the arc tool, you know, and just continuing this arc all the way. And you'll see that I'm coming to a point where this arc's getting really shallow, and you'll notice my arc is getting really small because I'm trying to get a really shadow, shallow arc and then start to curve it the other way without it um, getting crazy on me. So the way you do that is you make one or two really shallow arcs, um, really small, shallow arcs, and you can then sort of uh, manipulate it so that it goes from one side to the other without with while it's ha uh, maintaining that nice smooth curve and sometimes you'll get lucky like this where you can go from one spot all the way around like that you see that that's a pretty significant uh, piece of curve that I accomplished um, with with a very uh, oops I clicked the wrong spot there with a very little bit of I don't know, I'm sorry, with a very long line. I'm getting a bit thirsty here, so I'm losing my train of thought. Ah, oh, that's much better. Sorry about that. Um, so now you'll see that I, I've made this curve all the way around, and now I'm just going to finish it with a piece of curve because you'll see that this thing is, you know, rounded pretty much every everything about this thing is round. So we've done one side. Now I'm going to do the other, but I'm going to do the other side a little different because I want to show you guys kind of a unique tool. I don't always use this tool, but I really do like this tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select like almost the direct bottom of this heart. Okay. And I'm going to go straight up with it. And I'm going to select like say here. So I made one line straight up. And the reason why I did that is because I'm going to try a method called mirroring where I'm going to actually mirror one side. So I only have to make one side of this heart. I don't necessarily have to make both sides and I'm going to show you how, how to do that because I think it's important for everybody to know how to mirror something. So here we go. I'm going to start to make the curves for this heart. You'll see that I'm starting out with some really shallow, really small sort of curves here. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this heart is really, really um, round and it's very difficult to 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 get that round shape. Um, uh, I don't. I'm trying to figure out a good way to explain this. To get that round shape without making a bunch of little small curves. Um, if I were to try to make this two curves, I wouldn't get this nice sort of pie shape that I'm getting here. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's a pie shape, but it's like a nice full um, curve here. I, it would just look like a round circle. Uh, um, I, that's the best way I can explain it. I know it's a very vague description, but that's pretty much what's going on. So, again, I'm pulling this back because I want to follow the contour a little bit better than um, A little better than I was so there we go that's pretty much our heart I know it's not perfect but I I am okay with it I think I like it looks pretty good so we have half of a heart we need to turn that half a heart into a whole heart and then the, the way I'm gonna do that is first I'm gonna get rid of everything in this background I'm not gonna make this clip and this ring and all these chains. I'm not going to make that stuff. I'm just making the pendants themselves. So I'm going to erase uh, these lines on the outside so that I could just see my heart. 
That's all I want to see. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and erase, or I'm sorry, uh, delete this work plane tool. Delete all. Okay, so you'll see what we have here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this push-pull tool and I'm going to pull this thing out so it's three-dimensional, okay? So you'll see now it has uh, sort of three dimensions. Now I'm going to I'm going to select this whole piece of the, uh, this whole half a heart by using the arrow um, tool and holding down shift and just kind of going over different slices of it. I'm being careful not to um, select uh, this the other piece of the pendant because if I do that, um, what will happen is uh, I'll end up copying a piece of that pendant and I don't want to do that. I just want to copy um, this part. Sometimes you have to go along and sort of uh, click the lines yourself. You know, just because uh, that's what I just had to do because um, it, I was just wasn't having much success with selecting, which is common. So anyways, uh, I get everything selected, which I'm confident that most of this is selected or all. And you see this uh, red and orange tool up here at the top. It's like two triangles. That's the mirror tool. What you do is you click that and you're going to click one point. So I'm going to click this top point and then you're going to click another point like sort of at the bottom. And then you got to click a point that's not within that same line. So I went top, bottom, and then I'm going to go over and click this point down here. And you'll see immediately um, this becomes something else and you can't really do anything here until you've accepted these terms which is do I want to erase the original and no I don't I want to keep the original so now you'll see that I have a full heart right so the next thing I want to do is I want to get this full heart and I'm basically going to uh, f flatten it back out um, and I could use this push-pull tool. The only problem is when you do that, you end up deleting the old one. Control Z here. Um, so what I usually end up doing to, to remove this is I usually just get this eraser tool and I remove the back one. And the reason why I'm removing the back one is because um, I may decide to use this as a depth, the depth for my um, pennant later. I haven't decided if I want to do that, so I'm not going to go ahead and um, erase it prematurely if it's not, the, or if it might be the depth that I want it. So here we go. We have both pieces of pendant, and one thing you'll see is that they both have a hole. Um, we are going to have to put that hole back in, or put that hole on both of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this tool. I'm going to go to the center of this one, which makes it real easy. I'm going to click once and then I am going to, if you look down at the bottom, you'll see where it says um, radius and <laughs> I'm going to pull it out to where I like it and I think that 8 inches would be good. So I'm just going to push 8 and enter and knowing that that's 8, I can decide what this one's going to be. So I kind of get this right in the middle here and I click and then I'm just going to go out and it should automatically snap to 8 because that was a the previous dimension. So here we go. We have our um, our heart and our other pendant. Both um, look pretty good, but uh, you know, I honestly think, and this is my own uh, my own uh, perception. I think that this hole should be a little higher. So I'm just going to go ahead and Control Z a couple times and get back to where I was, and I'm just going to make this hole a little bit higher. I don't, I'm not even happy with that. I'm going to go to right about here. And then I'm going to get this hole. And I'm going to make it right about here. And I like that. I, the proportions are a little bit better from top to bottom. I think. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this crazy line right here. And you'll see that um, it kind of flipped our image on us which isn't the biggest thing in the world because honestly I am going to um, use my own image here. 
But what I do want to do is I want to erase this line and I want to just right click and click erase to these holes because they are actually going to be holes. Um, so now I need to add dimension to this and the way to do that is I'm going to use this push pull tool again and I'm just going to pull this out dimension that I like. But I'm going to keep in mind it if you see um, it says distance at the bottom right and it's 9 by 9 sixteenths. So I'm going to just go ahead and round that off to uh, 10 inches. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pull this out to 10 inches. And you'll see that I've, I've made these both. I, I like that distance. I think that looks really nice. But we're going to go ahead a step further and make these things really pop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. F Ooh. Oops. <laughs> Had the wrong tool selected here. I'm going to select this face and this face. Okay. And then you see these tools up here? I haven't used these tools before, but there's one that's called <coughs> round corner. Okay. And you'll see that it does some crazy stuff here. And um, that's because these offsets are, are strange. And I don't want these offsets to be so good or so big. So I'm going to change this to 4 inches instead of uh, what it was and see where we're at there. I like 4 inches, um, I think. But I think it should maybe be more around 3 inches. I'm not really worried about how intricate this is because someone's going to wear this. They shouldn't be resing this on their land. Um, I'm going to deselect this inner circle um, by holding down shift and clicking them so that we're only going to round off this edge um, on both of them. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click um, this check mark and it's going to take a minute and I think I will go ahead and pause the video while this progress is going so that um, uh, I don't waste time here. So give me just, I'll pause this video and be right back. All right, so you'll notice that um, now that we're back here, oops, I didn't mean to do that. You'll notice now that we're back here, we have this um, sort of curve now. It's nice and soft around that edge. See how soft that looks? I really like that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and texture this, but we're going to texture this in kind of a unique way. Um, I'm going to use what's, what I like to call projective texturing. And in doing that, um, first I'm going to add our work plane back. So I click the center point and click our two lines. Okay. Now with projected texturing, um, it's going to make our object uh, look like uh, this texture should have been applied to the or that it's applied to the whole thing and it gets those curves real good. So the first thing I want to do, so I'm going to file and I'm going to import a texture, but this texture is going to be our, I'm, I'm going to use this gold texture, okay? Gold texture, open this. This is going to be my texture for this thing. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to hold shift and kind of get it sort of like this. I think something like that. Okay. So now I could go ahead and erase this work plane. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to right click on the texture and I'm going to go to um, texture itself and I'm going to click project it, which means that when I copy this, it's going to project itself onto this onto these pendants. The next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to select both of the pendants um, like that, just by clicking and dragging with the uh, with the arrow tool. And then I'm going to click this eyedropper, take a sample of that, and then I'm just going to click these. And you'll see that they're taking on that texture, um, like you can't, you wouldn't really be able to tell very well that they're there um, unless you panned around. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this texture and see if it's projected properly. And it looks like it's projected really nicely onto um, onto this. So it has that really gold-looking um, property to it.
so to, to make sure that it's it's got the right uh, look I'm gonna go ahead and delete this so here we go we have our gold pennants you see the next thing we're gonna want to do is make it so that we can um, uh, I'm sorry burst this face um, the reason I did that is because it was a blue face and I had the blue face I don't want to have anything just the white face so the next thing we want to do is make it so you could put text over this and I'm really just gonna probably do that with um, an added layer basically of texture so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a work plane um, across this thing I'm gonna start like say right here I'm gonna drag it across one axis and then across the other axis double click and you'll see that it's gone across the front of this um, now what I need to do is I need to um, create sort of a rectangle where I would like my text to be so I'm gonna create this rectangle like say here on this one now I'll right click and I click reverse face okay now this other one's gonna be a little trickier so I'm gonna get this one and I'm gonna create my rectangle my rectangle sort of um, in front or to the side of it here so this rectangle is going to be something like this right click it and reverse the faces now delete my work planes and what I'm going to do is just get these rectangles I'm going to get this one I'm going to edit it or I'm going to sorry select it and then I'm going to use this tool here to position it kind of like that and we'll camera around so that we can see that we're getting this position right so our text is going to be kind of like that so this next one I'm going to get it sorry I need to select it and then I'm going to move it as well and first I'm going to move it somewhere in here like this And then next, I'm going to um, try to pull it out. Uh, I need to control Z, I'm sorry. Um, I need to first move it like that. And then sort of get it on here and cam while I'm doing that because uh, it's really, <laughs> it's kind of difficult sometimes to get it where you want it. Um, so you gotta take a couple shots at it I'm not really worried worried about that to move it kind of I need to move it up but it's not liking me there we go so just a little bit to the right here and I'm like that. I like that. So you know, uh, we're just going to use these for um, for our text. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to File, and I'm going to import uh, <clears throat> an image. Uh, this broken glass image will do fine. Um, and I'm just going to click and drag over the whole front of this texture. I'm going to do the same thing um, to the other one. Import this image and I'm going to click and drag over this one oops let's try that again file import click and drag this time uh, it doesn't really matter what texture you use so I'll just use this easy mesh texture now on this one since it's not a perfect square neither is my um, thing here I'm going to hold down shift um, to get it nice and perfectly on there okay so here we go we have both sides of the pendant now I'm going to go ahead and save this project, uh, save as, and then I'm going to save it to the desktop, and I'm just going to call this uh, pendant. Um, now the next thing I need to do is I need to take this, uh, oops, 
uh, so I need to take this and export it um, as a 3D model and I'll export this as an OBJ file and I'm going to call it um, uh, to the desktop I think and I'm going to call it pendant and I know I probably spelled that wrong so I'm not real great with spelling I know I'm drinking a lot my throat's a bit sore um, okay so now we'll go ahead and open up blender um, and we'll uh, start to manipulate it in blender so press a a couple times to select everything and delete don't need any of that so file import and then <coughs> obj weaver file from our desktop and we find pendant in here i thought i saved it no i saved it in pictures Oof. yeah pendant there we are import and you'll see we have everything here and you'll notice that it's a bunch of objects and what I want to do is I want to consolidate this into a few objects. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this this object here and I'm going to hold down shift and click this object here. Um, and then I'm going to hold I'm going to hit control J to join them together. Then I'm going to get this object here and this object here and hit control J to join them together. So now what these are are two objects, right? Um, so we could separate them and make two pendants when we import them, but there's no imp no point in importing twice when I could pay just one upload fee. So a file, and I'll go export um, as a collada, and I'm going to do this straight to my desktop, and I'm going to call this um, P-E-N. So I'm going to call it just pen. Export collada. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender, and I'll be right back. Or, I'm sorry, I'm going to open up uh, um, Second Life, and I'll be right back. We'll see this thing in World. All right, here we are back in Second Life. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead and res, or, uh, I'm sorry, upload our model we just made. So you go to Build, Upload, Mesh Model. And I'm going to find the model, which is in the desktop. And let's find it. It's called Pen. There it is. And we'll give it a minute to triangulate. And here we are. You'll see it looks pretty good from what I could tell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave most of this alone. Um, I'm going to go to the upload properties and make sure that this is set to 0.26 or 2.25 so it's not incredibly huge. It's still going to be pretty big, but I don't want it to be huge, huge. So that's what that's all about, the scaling. Um, so now I've clicked upload and i got to wait a minute so that it can figure out what the land fee is. I've, I've had this problem before where I, I just need to do it again. Um, sometimes uh, I have that problem where it doesn't like to take it the first time. So click Calculate Weights and Fees. And I'll go ahead and pause while it's doing this because it may take some time. All right, sorry about that. I was having a little <clears throat> difficulty with my viewer. I ended up uh, just go ahead, or going ahead and using the Second Life viewer. So we'll go to build, upload, <clears throat> um, model, and we'll find our model and desktop. Pendant model. <clears throat> 
some reason it says question, question mark, question mark on my linens, which I don't understand. So calculate the weights and fees. So it's going to cost 22 to upload. To upload, and there we go. So it called itself Mesh 3.0 because I forgot to name it. So I'm just going to go ahead and rename it now. Pendants. And then I'll res it out so we could see it. And it is very big. Go ahead and stretch this. And I'm going to go ahead and stretch both of them at the same time here to something a little more manageable. So you'll see we have our two pendants. And they have these uh, faces on them, which what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, select face for now. And I'm just going to turn these transparent so that we can see these texture and then uh, transparency. I'll just turn that all the way up to 100 so that we could see. When you put your texture, your text texture on there with the text, you'll have a transparent background so you won't see it anyways. Um, so here's what we have. And if I go ahead and upload, um, it may not let me. Yeah, I can't upload images right now because I can't figure out my balance. But if I could, um, these would look real nice with a gold texture on it. And um, you'll see um, if I go to edit uh, these and I click unlink, um, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, how do you unlink in this view? There we go, unlink. If I unlink these, you will see that they are now two objects. Um, each object has its face already attached. You could stretch these out and do whatever you want with them. But there you have it. Um, and like my other videos, uh, here's a cool little thing that I made. It's a maze. It's a quarter sim big. It takes some time to get through this maze. Um, this is all mesh, this whole maze. It's about 22 prim land impact, and it's stunningly textured um, with some pretty cool uh, uh, textures using ambient lighting. So anyways, uh, if you liked this video, please click like. Feel free to make comments on this video and tell me what you thought. Um, thanks for watching Easy Mesh Tutorials.